Hello everyone. Oh, sorry. Hello everyone. Brian here. Hope you're all well. I'm very well. I'm a bit cold, as you can tell. I've just got in. Uh, the heating has not yet warmed the house up and it is f f freezing. However, I have got my hand knitted hat and scarf hand knitted for me by my mum for Christmas. Uh, best Christmas present ever. Lovely and toasty and warm and um, I'm keeping them on until I warm up a bit. Uh, and the hat's perfect because it just, you know, it's, it's just the right size and then you can pull it down over your ears and even down over the back of your neck and then if the world really gets too much you can just completely shut the whole thing out and you can still kind of see, although uh, it's a bit like Sandra Bullock in Bird Box which I watched the other night and really enjoyed. Ignore the hype, just ignore the hype and enjoy it for what it is. That is, that's like a, that's like an aphorism for all of life, isn't it? Ignore the hype and just enjoy it for what it is, whether it's bird box or life. They're all the same thing anyway. So, um, why am I here today? Well, today I want to take you through uh, another deck that is related to magic because this is the latest in my My Kind of Magic series and the deck that we're going to be looking at is one that I alluded to in my last video when I mentioned the um, famous, or at least famous to people who are into that kind of thing, Chaos Magician Peter J. Carroll who um, was really one of the originators of the Chaos Magic current if you like and who wrote the books Liber, Nur Re Liber Null and Psycho Knot. Uh, neither of which I've read. I've, I've skimmed through them and I've had a look at them, but I've not actually read them in detail. Um, so I can't vouch for them one way or the other. All I do know is that they are extremely influential within the Chaos Magic sphere. And um, the deck that I want to show you, let me just grab it, is um, I think possibly his most recent publication. And it doesn't come in this rather ugly uh, sort of pencil case style huge wallet but the reason I've got this is that the the deck and the book actually don't come in their own box uh, they come separately um, and there isn't really a box to go with the cards and you'll see in a moment why I have to um, I had to find something to put them in because they are both really pretty big so um, the book first of all uh, is called Epoch and it's written by Peter J Carroll and Matt Cabrin and uh, it was a big book as you can tell, uh, hardcover and we'll go on to that in a second and the cards, wow, look at the size of these cards, they're like the size of my head. So um, they're big cards, they're big cards, unfortunately very flimsy card stock so that's the first thing uh, to make you aware of. Also they're not the kind of cards that are going to be in any way easy to shuffle, of course, unless you have got, you know, abnormally huge hands, basically. So um, that's the size of the cards and the, co the comment on the card stock, that's the size of the book. And um, let's get on with talking about what this deck is really all about. So the first thing to say, perhaps, is that the reason it's called Epoch is um, that the book and the deck together constitute something that Peter Carroll is calling the Esotericon and the Portals of Chaos Epoch. And really the Esotericon is what's included in the book and the Portals of Chaos are the images within the cards and um, I'll say a bit more about those shortly and also about the image that we see on the back. But I'm going to um, read you a couple of things actually from a couple of uh, online reviews of the deck, which I'll link below, uh, because they go into a lot of detail, a lot more detail than I will be able to go into in this video. Um, but a couple of paragraphs, I think, that um, are really worth reading to you because they um, they actually kind of set out for you um, what this deck is about and what it's trying to achieve. So um, probably uh, the best thing to start with is uh, in uh, the blog of Baphomet, uh, a paragraph from that which actually sets out what the intention was. The project of the Epoch is to present a new synthesis of magical thinking and practice, a paradigm incorporating deities and concepts, old, recent, and a touch of new and fusion gods like Bob Leg Legba. Um, pantheons from several global religions are drawn on which will appeal, appeal to the 21st century chaos mage. Much of the book has a slight tongue-in-cheek attitude presented straight-faced yet with a twinkle in the eye of the author and the artist. However, this does not detract from the solid core of 
research and exper experiential knowledge brought to bear. Um, and from uh, a Wizard's Word review, uh, with superb production quality, the hardbound oversized book has over 200 thick full colour photograph quality pages. Oh, now I should just warn you, nudity alert, nudity alert. In this video, there will be pictures of breasts and penises and bottoms. So if any of that kind of stuff freaks you out or offends you, click away now. And if you stay and have a good old look at what I'm about to show you, on your own head be it if you get all upset. So um, I just opened it at this page as an, as an example of the, um, the colour and the photographic quality. And yes, nudity alert. That's Lucifer letting it all hang out. And uh, you will see that all of the book is in similar quality, lots of lovely glossy pictures um, of various things including how to do particular rituals and spells and blah 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 blah. So very good quality. Over 200 thick full colour photograph quality pages, the pictures of the portals of Chaos Deck appear full size in the book and only slightly less shiny than the card. So again if you weren't sure about getting the deck you could just get the book and that would uh, give you a lot of information. Because of its odd size, it's 9 inches tall and 10 and a half um, uh, inches wide, and a large number of large pictures, tons of blank space, and up to three columns of small font text per page, determining the actual length of the book seems difficult. It feels longer than Carol's earlier works, but didn't seem to take longer to read. Uh, and this reviewer is saying, it made me wish for the expression of book length and word count instead of pages. Um, the 54 cards have the same large size, 9 inches by 5.69 inches, that's 22.9 centimetres by 14.4 centimetres, um, but the borders on the cards render their pictures somewhat smaller. Uh, having the cards so large makes them kind of flimsy, and thicker cardstock would likely improve them, but their intended use in ritual as altar pieces rather than as divination tools makes their thinness a non-issue. So really this deck is designed for uh, ritual work, magical work. You could use it for divination of course, you know, I, I sometimes wonder when people say oh, I can't possibly use big cards for div divination. Well, you know, you can use... Um, you, you can use clouds for divination, you can use the flight pattern of birds for divination. So if you can use that kind of thing for divination, you can certainly use the large cards. But of course you would have to find different ways of randomising the cards, shuffling them and so on. Um, uh, but you can still use them. However, these were designed more for ritual work. The epoch contains three grimoires, one each for elemental, planetary and stellar magic, although only the grimoire for stellar magic, a manifestation of the Necronomicon, we'll come on to that in a second, so um, there are uh, elements of HP Lovecraft in this, appear in classical grimoiric form, with implements to construct and explicit rituals to perform to conjure a set of entities. The other two grimoires, um, the elemental and planetary ones, seem less robust in comparison, presenting only the entities for the elements and planets, and mostly leaving the mage to figure out what to do with them while giving sparse instructions. This actually seems appropriate though, as the forces dealt with move from simple and general to complex and specific, to complex and general, requiring greater detail towards the end. Subsequent parts of this review will cover the Grimoire chapters themselves. So I will link, as I say, these, these uh, reviews below so you can get a real sense of um, how, the, how the deck uh, um, works. Um, so I think probably the best thing to do is for us to just move into the cards. I will say something um, about the image that's on the back of the cards. This is what uh, Peter J. Carroll and Matt um, Cabrin, Cabrin uh, call the Kabbala, and of course it is based on a synthesis of the Kabbalah and also chaos magical elements. Um, and uh, so just to say a little bit here, the Kabbalistic Tree of Life for the last couple of centuries has served as this symbolic map for um, uh, planetary magic, showing the descent of the one down through the celestial spheres culminating in the physical world. To reconcile the need for a symbolic map fitting the chaos magic model, Carol will present a new glyph in the next chapter, the Kabbalah. So this is reviewing the different, um, uh, different kind of uh, parts of the book. Um, and what it says here is, uh, last we reached the, 
the representation of the Kabbalah, Carol's symbolic representation superstructure for arranging the forces and deities represented in the portals of Chaos deck and meant as an analogous replacement for the Kabbalistic tree of life. In brief, at one end we find the five elements representing a simple breakdown of our physical reality on Earth. I think I've got, sure I've got this right bit up. Um, uh, and at the other end, five elder gods who represent dangerous knowledge and various transhuman and alien ideas. Between the two um, lies the Octaris Mind Star, a fully interconnected octagon suggesting a complex psychological model of combinations of the eight basic selves. The division seems like a natural one into world, self, and other. Between the three realms lie two transition spheres. Baphomet, representing the life of the biosphere or the world soul, lies between the elements and the psyche, and Nayar Lathotep, who acts as the emissary of the elder gods. Although Carol says that the diagram resembles a neural network rather than a tree, with a magician capable of starting anywhere, not just at the bottom, the direction of ascent remains as clear to me as in the tree of life, earth, planets, stars. Indeed, he says that rarely does the magician start off with the elder gods, and I imagine if one did so, it would produce similar results to a program of Kabbalistic magic that began with an attempt to cross the abyss of, of death. So, um, I think that's enough preamble to give you a sense of how interesting and unique this piece of work is. So what I'm going to do now is I am actually just going to walk through the cards and I'm actually beginning to get a bit warm so I'm going to take off my marvellous scarf and my marvellous hat and it's me! It's me behind all that wool and fluff. It really is me. And um, yeah, let's just get stuck into uh, the, the deck, the, the Portals of Chaos deck. And what I'm going to do is I'll keep the book open uh, in front of me so that I can help um, you understand where we are in the deck as we move through. And I'm not going to say very much about these cards because I haven't used this deck a great deal other than to look through it and read some of the book. But some of it will be obvious to you, some of it less obvious. So we're starting with the elemental representations, obviously. And here we have Earth. Water. fire and air and needless to say of course you can tell from the kind of imagery we're looking at that this is in fact a photo montage photo collage deck um, not the kind of deck that I usually favor to be honest but I actually really like the images in this and I think they're actually quite uh, powerful and effective um, here we have ether and um, I actually find that they, they work really well, partly because of the size of the cards and because of the uniqueness of the cards, um, and also because they're actually really well done. The artwork is really well done. It doesn't look to me, although some of them are obviously posed from real people and some of them are obviously computer generated, that doesn't get in the way of my enjoyment of the images in the way that um, actually sometimes uh, photo montage decks do. So, and then we have Baphomet. Now I'm going to pause here because of course this is in the elemental area and I think we all understand the five elements um, including ether but um, the reason Baphomet is included is explained here in the book. In addition to the elemental archetypes many magicians with neo-pagan anti-monotheist or atheistic sympathies like to work with a god form that encompasses all of their traits as a human animal plus that of terrestrial existence in general from its mineral vegetable and animal to its mental magical and spiritual components. Such a god form has existed, conceptualized in various forms and with various names since the earliest eons. The ancient shamans called it the Great Spirit. The Greek pagans called it Pan. Other pagans knew it as the Horned God. To the monotheist it became the Devil, and to atheist it remains the Hidden God, revealed only by intuitions of panpsychism. To Eliphas Levi it appeared as Baphomet. Seated on a cube for earth and a world sphere, winged for air, with fish symbolism for water on its belly, and a lamp between its mammalian animal horns, it resumes all the elements. It resumes, or should that be resembles? Anyway, it appears humanoid, androgynous rather than male, with breasts shown and a symbolic penis disguised as a magical caduceus wand. Oh, 
Oh, I suppose that's... yeah. Yeah, okay. That wasn't where I expected it to be. Uh, it bears a pentagram for magic on its brow. So, uh, Baphomet is this kind of encapsulation of all of the elements. So then, we are moving into... Um, and by the way, at the beginning of each of the grimoires, there is a kind of contextual uh, paragraph or con contextual chapter. So here we have a chapter called Theometry and Aeonics. And um, you know, various different diagrams, too complicated to go into, just to say that this is very uh, comprehensive in terms of pulling together linkages between different planets and so on. And then it moves into planetary magic and god forms and what it does is it looks at how um, each of the different planets uh, Uranus, Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, the Sun, Venus, Mercury and the Moon can interact with each other and that then it creates new god forms and you'll a bit like um, in astrology when a planet is in another planet's sign um, or in a particular house you get this kind of combination of uh, qualities and elements that result in something new and that's how the planets uh, work. So um, and I'll just give you an example of how that works. So we start off with Uranus himself, Uranus, uh, spelt Uranus here, um, so uh, that's a planet and then we move to Odin. Now why do we move to Odin? Well according to the grimoire this is a combination of um, Uranus and Saturn. So this is Saturnine Uranian. So if uh, Uranus is influenced by Saturn, then you get this quality, which is Odin. And for the astrologers among you, it might be interesting to consider, um, you know, how would the quality of Odin relate to uh, um, uh, the combination of Saturn and uh, uh, Uranus uh, in a, a, a a astrological chart. Then we have Thoth, and this is the mercurial quality of uh, Uranus. And then we go on to Matt, and here we have the Jupiterian uh, quality of Uranus. So you can see from the bottom of the card, it tells you which, which uh, planet is modifying which planet. So here um, Saturn is, uh, sorry Jupiter is modifying Uranus. Here we have Mars and because we're moving now on to, um, uh, to, to Mars's influence on Uranus and here we have Athena. And then we have Jupiter when the Sun influences. We've seen him before. Apophenia. of Venus there and the influence of the moon Isis. So then we move on to the Saturnian card with Saturn himself and wow wouldn't this make a fantastic death card in um, the tarot and this is of course Saturn influencing Saturn and then we move on through um, the different qualities and we're moving on to Osiris, which is Jupiter modifying Saturn. When Mars influences Saturn, we have Caronzon, who looks rather like Darth Maul. Baron Samedi for the Sun influencing Saturn. So, because it's Saturn, these are all quite dark imposing cards. Kali. Anubis. When the moon influences Saturn we have Hecate. Now moving on to Jupiter. Jupiter himself. Mars influencing Jupiter. God of Thunder Thor. Sun influencing Jupiter, Jehovah. Juno and Venus's influence is felt. Vulcan. Dionysus. 
Captain Marge himself. Horus, when the sun influences Marge. Eris, when Venus influences Mars. When Mercury influences Mars, you get the trickster Loki. Ishtar, with the moon. And the sun himself, of course, is Sol. Uh, when Venus influences the sun, we have BVG and child that is uh, the blessed virgin goddess I think and child Bob Legba. so let me just read you as an example what it says about Bob Legba because um, this is not someone that probably would be known to most of us but this is when um, Mercury influences the Sun most of the more subtle and sophisticated mythologies have a trickster god or at least a god or goddess who sometimes plays that role. The trickster usually also plays the role of intermediary or intercessor or messenger between gods and humans. This reflects both the rather tricky matter of communicating with gods and the frequently tricky nature of their responses. Only, often they will not give you what you profess to want. At other times they will throw a spanner in the works to keep life interesting particularly if you stand at a crossroads in life or at cross purposes. The Norse used Loki and the Greeks and Romans used Hermes and Mercury to support the trickster role, but our image depicts the trickster in a deliberately tricky form. The African Yoruba trickster deity Ishu became Legba or Papa Legba after the forced African diaspora to the Americas. There he cunningly camouflaged himself by hybridization with several Catholic saints, gaining St. Peter's keys to the gates between the world, the resurrection of St. Lazarus, and perhaps the demon and disease-resisting powers of St. Anthony in the process. Um, in his earlier African incarnations, he manifests sometimes as a virile, hor horned young man. In his Caribbean manifestations, he often appears as a crooked and lame, kindly old man with a strange twinkle in his eyes, supported by a cane or a crutch, and always smoking a pipe. As a trickster, he can manifest in any guise. Apparently, he knows all the languages of the world, plus the cosmic tongue. tongue. From which we may surmise that he understands the meaning of the thoughts underlying any language and can speak with the gods. We show him in the guise of a dapper male of middle years. He carries the keys and a jaunty cane with a head reminiscent of the wand carried by the Egyptian Thoth. An Anubis-style mutt follows him around as he walks over a legba beaver chopped on a Caribbean crossroads. The mutt's lope seems oddly reminiscent of that of a coyote, another of the trickster's forms. Bob Blegba has the air of a slick salesman or a confidence trickster about him, and he sports the Bob Dobbs head and Dobbs, style, Dobbs pipe beneath his tropical-style feathered mercurial hat. So you can see how different influences kind of mean the same, same thing come together there. Then moving over to the, the moon's influence on Sol, you get Ashira. Um, and of course, many of you will know of the Ashira um, tarot. And Venus herself. When naughty Mercury influences Venus, you get Pandora's box. And it's like, oh shit, what have I let out here? Babylon. Moon and Venus. Mercury himself. Moon influencing Mercury. Paridolia. And then the moon itself or herself. So that is the planetary side of things. And then, of course, we move on to the, um, the final grimoire, the Necronomicon. And this is where we find um, that it's based on the concept of the Elder Gods, which, of course, were um, uh, developed by uh, H.P. Lovecraft and thought of by H. Lovecraft and what you find is that for each one of these uh, the cards um, as that review I read said um, can be used in specific ways and you're given 
um, instructions on how to use them and how to use them both for invocation and for evocation and you'll see that at the bottom um, the same god so let's start with this one now I'm going to completely mangle the pronunciation of these so please forgive me elder gods Nyar Lafatep evocation invocation so different cards for the same entity but to be used in different ways depending on whether you're evoking or um, invoking um, and there's information about uh, each of them, what they're for, um, what they represent, etc. Um, and um, uh, different names. So with Nayar Lafatep, uh, he comes as the Dark Pharaoh, the Exploiter, the Master of Cults, the Demon of the Bloody Tongue, the Demon Lord of Priestcraft, the Black Man of the Sabbath, the Crawling Chaos that dom Domination Spreads. The Hierophant, so there's some links to um, uh, tarot uh, in here. So that's Nyar Lafotep, Evocation. And Invocation. One of the most famous um, of the Elder Gods from Lovecraft, of course, is Cthulhu. Evocation, and they each have their little sigil at the bottom, you'll see and invocation quite disturbing images in these other gods i have to say um deliberately so i would have thought um and cthulhu it says in terms of invoking cthulhu cthulhu comes as the dragon that sleeps and yet does not sleep the dragon that seemeth dead but has not died the octopus that waits dreaming and can eternal lie the ability of the mind to correlate all its contents the piecing together of dissociated knowledge, the destroyer of the illusion of self, the death of the individual identity illusion, the destroyer of the illusions of consciousness, the auto-manipulative mind, the modifier of memory, the master of telepathy, and the magician. So um, there are, uh, again, some indications of how you might use these uh, deities or elder gods in invocation or ego evocation. So the next one we have is Shub Nigarath for evocation and invocation. And Shub Nigarath comes as the All Mother and wife of the elder gods, the author of life and lust and strife, Ishtar Astarte, the mother of creatures spat for, forth into monstrous life, the mother of Baphomet, the spoor of life across the universe, the autophagous cosmic, autophagous cosmic biota, the mistress of the magnum Innominandum, im, im, Innominandum. I'm going to have to look some of these up. Then we have Hastur, Evocation. Hastur, Invocation. And Hastur comes as the tattered king in yellow, our measure of disorder and randomness, the emptiness of all things and the futility of permanence, the watcher of extrophy, the gentropy and ectropy, um, the sacrificer of Shoggoths and all their works. The feaster from afar, the voider of forms. Then we have Yog Sothoth, evocation and invocation. Uh, Yog Sothoth comes as the key and guardian of the gate, the knowledge of the gate, the nethermost outposts of space and time, the lurker at the threshold of outer space, the omniscience across space time. And then we have Azathoth, Azathoth. Evocation and Azototh invocation. And Azototh, Azototh comes as the Lord of Primal Chaos, the blind idiot god, which kind of makes me think of the, the fool, the demon sultan gnawing hungrily in the dark, the um omnipotent and insensate one, the mindless entity which rules all time and space, 
the monstrous nuclear chaos beyond angled space, the blasphemy bubbling at the centre of all infinity, the alchemist meddling with the very fabric of reality. So um, that is a thought of. And that, my friends, is the very interesting, very unusual, rather unique deck called the Portals of Chaos as part of Epoch the Esotericon and the Portal of the Chaos. So I would say if you're interested in, um, if you like, cross-cultural magic, if you're interested in chaos magic that brings lots of different strands of magic together, if you're interested in deity work and you want to, ex and planetary magic, and you want to expand that beyond some of the usual forms that you're used to, and you're interested in a rather irreverent, uh, very entertaining, very informative um, chaos magic home then this may well be for you so i will link below where you can get hold of it i will link the reviews i mentioned and i hope you found this of interest and i have another day to show you so i'm going to finish this video and get straight on to my next magical deck in the my kind of magic series see you soon